Hello, everyone. Today I'm with Oregon State wide receiver Jeremiah Noga. Thank you for joining me today. Yeah, you're welcome. I appreciate you letting having me on here. Yeah, anytime. I'll start with my first question. How old were you when you started playing football? Um, I think I was football's been running in my family for a while, but I think playing like my actual football was probably like second grade. I played flag football with all my buddies, like all our dads built a football team. We all just played on it. Yeah, so it was always running in your family in second grade. You got into the game of football. Yeah, my, my pops and uh, played, you know, at the college level and his older brothers played in the league. So it's kind of just been running in my blood a little bit. Oh, wow. So, yeah, you have that long history. Where'd your dad play? Played, uh, he went to Juco at first and then he went to Alabama State. That's cool. Yeah. And then you know, my uncle's played in the league for a little bit. So you have that history then you're continuing it. Yeah, I guess so. But they all played on the defense side, and they was all linebackers and D linemen. So I'm Switch the first one up. on the offense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What made you pick Oregon State? Shoot, I picked Oregon State because you know it was close to home, and uh, I had a couple other offers out of high school, but I just thought like you know, this was some like an area I could go out and play early on, and. Uh, being as a walk-on, I was like, I talked to Coach Smith and Coach Cookies, and they were walk-ons as well, and I just knew I they knew what I, what I was going to go through, and so I took my chances and ended up here, and that was re really the reason why they knew what, what I was going through. So I was like, I'm going to take my chances and go there, and they treated me like, like, like all the rest. Like all the rest. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go there for sure. So even though you're walking and they treated you just like everyone else and they knew what it was like since that's what their shoes had been, your family could go see you a lot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, it's not too far. It's only three hours away from my hometown. And, uh, you know, I was like, you know, if I if I really, like, love football and this is my dream, I'll just go over there and play football. And, you know, I've earned my money now, so it's all worth it, I guess, now. Yeah. What was it like getting in and making the two catches against Arizona State? It was, it was pretty cool because, like, that was, like, my first really playing time so far in college football. So, like, to go over there and play in a different stadium, it wasn't even at home, really. You know, after that, I, I started playing a lot more and seeing a lot more reps, even though it was, like, closer to the end of the season. I think that's just, like, the start of something that I'm going to bring to the team for next year. Yeah, you guys, you it was like officially like making that dream of college football because you got two catches and you did an away in Tempe and then hey, earned yeah. more playing time for you. Yeah, exactly. So, I think I think God's just got a plan for me. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ride with it. Yeah. Can you but talk yeah. about when you made your 11 yard tackle against Oregon? Yeah, I actually can't. Uh, that's just like a you know. That play actually wasn't supposed to be like that. I was actually supposed to block, and another guy was supposed to rush the punter. But uh, uh, when I went, when I saw that he wasn't rushing, I was like, "Oh, he the, like the tackle had like shifted down, and no one was blocking me." So I just ended up running towards the punter, and he ended up fumbling the ball. And actually, in like for a split second, I forgot. I was like, "Can I hit him? Can I not?" And I was like. Nah, dang. I could have picked up the ball, but I was like, screw, I'm going to hit him. I don't want to – I want to take no chances. And luckily enough, it was on the one-yard line, and we ended up scoring the very next play. So it was just a little freak accident that ended up being good for me. So even though it wasn't supposed to happen, you made a great play out of it and helped the touchdown. Yeah, natural natural instincts, I guess. But yeah. How much different did the environment feel in that game? Shoot, that environment was uh, – it was it was a little different, you know, because it's a rival rival game, but it's kind of football at the end of the day. So, you know, it's a little different at the end when we win. That was a little different, you know, the crowd like coming on the field. Like I know that's not the first time, but it was a good time because we came back from a from losing at halftime, you know. So it was it was a little different, but I, you know, I really enjoy that stuff and brings that's where people make good plays and or they could they don't. I thought it was pretty cool though. Yeah, so you prepare for it just like any other game, but the winning part, that's even bigger with the fans. And then, you know, it just means more the win. 
Yeah, it, it really does. It really does when you prepare all that the whole week. And, and especially since the rivalry, like our coaches have been playing them. Like I, I even grew up an Oregon Duck fan. Like I got, really? yeah, my favorite player is Marcus Mariota. So like <laughs> seeing, like seeing myself, like my mom has sent me photos, like after the game of me, like in a whole bunch of like Oregon Duck. I used to go to Oregon football camps and like they was talking to me when I was in high school. So like just to play them and like be on the field against those guys, like, the whole game, it was, it was pretty cool. That was cool that you got to play against the team that you guys grew up rooting for. Yeah, it was crazy. What was your favorite moment from this past season? Shoot. Um, I think my favorite moment from this past season was probably, honestly, just getting on the field for the first time, for like, for real, like, you know, as a freshman, I got in for one game, but it wasn't, like, nothing too special. It was just, like, you know, put them in a game, redshirt after. But, like, I just – getting on the field, I would say, like, not really, like, just one specific moment, but just, like, a whole, like, year worth of actually playing college football and, like, living out my dream. Yeah, so really getting on the field and, like, you knew you you were living your dream. Like, you really made it. Yeah, for sure. That's had to be it. What kind of off-season training have you been doing? Uh, right now I'll be, we you know we're throwing the football with like with DJ and Ben and Aiden and them, but right now I'm kind of going through a little knee pains. I got like knee pains in my knee, so I'm trying to take it easy and re- recover and rehab right now. But uh, I'll be back by spring ball and chilling. So right now I'm just kind of get my body right, get a little bigger, faster, stronger, and then should be back and ready to go for for another season. Yeah, so right. you, also, you don't want to overwork it while it's not season. You got to get the recovery so you can play in the games. Exactly. Ice ice, ice tub and hot tub, That's those are my best friends right now. Making sure that your body is just prepared for the season. Mm-hmm, for sure. For sure. What kind of role do you think you'll have with the team next season? For as of right now, I'm not sure. Like, obviously, everyone shoots to be a leader. I don't think anyone really shoots to be a role player. But you know, we have a lot of guys coming back, and uh, you know, I'm not really sure right now. I'm not a young. I'm not a young buck anymore. I guess you could say. I mean, technically, I am like a rusher, sophomore going into. But you know, I don't like to see myself because we have so many incoming freshmen and transfers. I don't really see myself as the young buck anymore, and. And I've experienced a little bit, so – and especially with some of the guys leaving, like Tyjon Lindsey and Trayshawn Harrison, like those guys leaving and Makaya switching positions. You know, I think it's just a big year for me to step it up and, like, help out the others while also trying to better myself. Yeah, so now you you have the experience that some of them won't have. It's will be your third year with the team, so you can help out them and improve your skills. Yeah, exactly, for sure. What are your goals for the upcoming season? Some of my goals is, uh, you know, I just want more playing time. I just want to show that I can do more than, you know, block. I can <laughs> I can go out there and, you know, catch a ball. And and uh, I just want to make – I just want to make plays. That's, like, my goal is I just want to make big plays every game and try to do my part for the team. That's what I really want to do. So get more playing time and show how much you can help out the team and just lead to more wins. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I want to go win. I want to win a national championship. That's what I really want to do. And, and go for it all. Be on mm-hmm. top. Yeah, exactly. For sure. How would you describe yourself off the field? I would describe myself off the field as just like a popular loner. Like everyone knows me. I hang out with everybody. I'll be cool with everybody laughing and, and joking around with everybody. But I don't really go out. Like I don't really hang out with many people besides my like my girlfriend or my family and I usually just stay in and watch Netflix like like don't tell the teammates this but like I really go out there and watch a movie by myself but they might they might clown on me for real <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so it's like a popular loner like you'll talk to everyone have be friends with them we also like you're alone time almost like you're you know just relaxing yeah like I, I need that I need that time away from the facility like I love I love my like my guys, but like I just need time to like chill out, do my homework, and watch 
watch a movie or a film or something just just to get away from that stuff. Yeah, so that you can just, and then you're back ready so that to do it again. Exactly, exactly. Then the last question I have is for fun. You get to take any three NFL players to dinner. They could be past or present. Who are you taking? Shoot. I'm definitely taking Mike Evans. He's my favorite wide receiver in the league. And then uh I'm I gotta take I gotta take my two uncles that played in the league. There, those are the other two. I'd probably take them. Even though I get to sit down with them all the time, they always got knowledge for me and they always are willing to spread it to me and let me learn from them. And I think it's cool because those guys, like, they teach me more than just football. They teach me, like, life lessons every time I talk with them. And so I think I have to choose them for real. So you get your favorite play, your favorite wide receiver and then you get your uncles. Exactly, yeah. And uh, Mike Evans, uh, he's just got a story. So I want to hear his stories. Yeah, that'd be a great dinner. Where'd your uncles play? My uncles played at the Minnesota Vikings, uh, Al Noga, and then uh, Nico Noga played at uh, – <clears throat> he played at the Lions. But he also played at the Cardinals as well. So just a little bit of everywhere. So he played some good teams. Yeah, for a little bit. All right, thank you for joining me today. Yeah, I appreciate it, Nathan. Thank you for having me. Yeah, anytime.